Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a tutorial where I teach you how to upload your website to a live server. I've gotten a, a few requests for this video so here goes. Okay so the website we're going to upload is the same one that I'm currently uh, working on in these tutorials and this is the uh, my point of sale. Um, <clears throat> my point of sale uh, website here. So this one is on my local server, which is inside this folder, uh, CZAMP HTDocs point of sale. That's where it is. So let's look at the basics of how this whole thing works, because I believe that understanding how things work is the key. So instead of me showing you exactly step by step how to do things, I will show you that, of course but it's important to have an understanding of what's going on that way you know exactly how to improvise if your system is different okay so i'm going to do it with a real hosting client and secondly i'll do it with the free version so we're going to start with the free version so that everybody uh, anyone can follow along and then i'll do it with a paid subscription on ipage the website that i use for my uh for hosting is ipage.com that's what i use but i'm not endorsing this product because i'm paid or anything like that i've i've used ipage uh, for i think 10 years now so it's pretty good um, but you can use any hosting client of your own and we're going to use a free one as well which is uh, let's open that it's zero 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 webhost.com like this yeah so 000 webhost.com this one also this one is free they do offer free uh, hosting with php supported which is awesome so we're going to use this one as well so you can sign up here let's just click sign in and then we can create an account but before that we need to understand what really goes on and then also we're going to need a software called FileZilla. So what you can do is just uh, Google FileZilla download. I don't know why I Googled that. But download and then you go, you find the FileZilla project, project.org and you, you can come here, click uh, download. So this is the download uh, part. Wait a minute. Did I click? Oh, there we go. Then you can get the basic version, that's all. You just need something basic, you don't need much. So I'm going to explain what FileZilla is for. FileZilla is really a FTP client. So it's just for you to upload files faster. You don't need to use this. You can use the file system on your hosting account, but usually those are inadequate. They don't come with the best tools. Some of them do, but you can always have FileZilla for quickly uploading and uh, downloading files from your server. So we'll see how to use that as well. So to begin with, let me do a little bit of explanation on what goes on. So we are moving from your local host to a live server. Yes. And we're going to need two things. Number one, we're going to need hosting. Okay. Now hosting is simply hard drive space. So hosting is just the hard drive space that you need. Because when your website is on your computer, it actually lives on the file system, like here. So you need a place to actually put your files on the uh, internet. So you need some actual hard drive sp space on the server. Uh, sorry about that. So to get that, it's called hosting. So this is what it is, hard drive space. So usually you pay for this, maybe you can pay for one year, uh, usually it's expensive or you can pay for three years or five years depending on what you want the longer the better so you don't get inconvenience then there's a domain name now this one is just the link to your website okay so an example would be uh, facebook.com now facebook.com is a domain name and so once you uh, once you are given this domain name, nobody else can use it because it will cause confusion, of course. It's like registering your company name. That's how it is with the domain name. Now, some people use separate companies for the domain name and the hosting for various reasons. 
so you can go to one company like i think it's one.com and then one like o-n-e where you can buy your domain name and then you can find another company for hosting they do this because sometimes one company may go down and uh, especially the hosting company that's where the breakages usually happen and then since your domain name is somewhere else you can simply shift to another hosting account and you will not need to change the link to your website but your website will still be online regardless where that hard drive space is where you're hosting it from but personally i haven't found such problems so i just use the same company which is ipage for both of these because they give you a free domain name the first time you apply for hosting usually that's what most do so uh in that situation you you get hard drive space and you get a domain name now the way it is is that on one account so you have your account right let's say i have an account a hosting account right so if i have let's say hosting account what happens is that on this one account i can have multiple uh domain names so it's very possible to buy several domain even 20 or 100 domain names in one hosting account that's because there's a system where you can tell each domain name which folder the, your files the files for that website belong to so you can have let's say three folders on your on your hosting account folder one two three and then you buy three domains right then you can tell it that when somebody is trying to access facebook.com they should go to this folder when this one they should go here and for this one they should go here so this is how it is possible to do all this on one account so these are pointers you can put pointers to point to specific folders for a specific domain name okay but one hosting account only all right so that's how that goes so here are the key points to remember when you want to put your website online number one once you buy this is once you have your hosting and you have your domain now here we have we're going to use a free version like i said uh, for domain and hosting both of these and we're going to see everything here that i'm talking about then we'll do a paid version later so the the key things you need is one you need to find where the file manager is on your hosting account once you make that account find the file manager because this is what allows you to manage your files to upload and get files from there if you can't find it that's okay you can always use filezilla but it's a good idea to actually know where that file manager is because there are things you need to do like extracting files using the file manager which you can do with filezilla i think at the moment i'm not sure and then there's a domain pointer you need to know where the domain pointers are that way you can point each domain name to a particular folder now on certain systems like the ones we're going to be using here that are free these things are automatic they are done for you you don't have an option because you can only have one domain name and obviously one folder so they don't give you these options but if the option is there find it this domain pointer then you have to know where the mysql database lives and then you have to find your php settings because of course every website is dynamic so we need to know where mysql is because we need a database and then we look for php settings so you can enable or disable uh, error reporting for your system okay all right so uh, and other php settings so let's find these in uh, our current system let's start with the free one and then we can move on to ipage which is a paid hosting so in order to go to the free one go to 000webhost.com and open it up now to prepare your files for transfer you have to uh, let's go to our folder right here in the folder uh, we have the app and we have the public folder in here now whatever file system you are using doesn't matter you may not have this you may just have files just zip everything so i'll zip this uh, separately for completely uh, unclear reasons so I'll zip the public and the zip yeah so now they are zipped that way i just need to upload one file instead of looking for files in there now you don't need to zip if you will be using filezilla we'll see how that works but for now let's zip them and then 
uh, let's go to sign in here, right? Let's click sign in. Uh -huh. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So I already have an account here, so I'm just going to sign in real quick, but you can create your own account, no big deal. Uh, where is the sign up page? Oh yeah, okay, there we go. So log on and the sign up. And then they give you this here. Since it's free, you only get one of these and the, the, your link to your website is here. So you are given this link, it's not uh, yours to choose, the, the link is just there. So if I click on manage, you can always upgrade to get a paid version of this. So let's manage the website instead. I'll click that. Okay. Now, like I said here, um, these websites are very different. The way things appear when you log in. So here, this is what you've seen when I've logged in, right? If I log into iPage, I see something very, very different. We're going to see that as well. This is why it's important to just look for specific key places. Uh, wait a minute, maybe my internet is acting up. I am not sure, let me refresh. Things don't seem to be running here. Is it my network or there's just a problem here? I'm not sure. Now I can see my, uh, my website. Okay, there we go. Let's click manage. See if it'll work this time. It had shown me an error here for some reason. I think it's uh, internet speeds and all that. Oh my God. Okay. Why? What is going on? Let me refresh again. Okay, maybe something is wrong with this. I I don't get it. It's loading, which means it's fine. Okay, what if I uh, create a new website? Create a new site? Okay, I can only, you have one website out of one allowed. Okay, so I can only add one, uh, nothing more. Okay, so there's details here. Things seem to be working, but what is going on? can't manage my page. This really sucks. Let me wait for it to fully load, maybe to the end here. Uh, then I can, uh, okay, so it's loaded. It's loading again, what the, oh my God. Okay, click on that. Hopefully I don't get that error again. See, this is why I don't like JavaScript. It's very buggy. Okay, so there we go. Finally, we get something, right? Okay, so it's opened here and all this looks very overwhelming. But like I said, keep in mind, we're looking for the file system. This is all we're looking for right now, the file system. So where do we get? This is the dashboard. We have tools here, etc. Uh, statistics. So let's look down here and try to see where it says file manager. And you can see it right there. And then we have FTP accounts. So the problem here is that because this is a free service, FTP accounts are not allowed, which means we can't use FileZilla. We have to rely on the file manager that lives here. So still, let's click on that and then let's click on that as well. Uh, just to get to the file manager, this is all we need. And then since this has gone here, we can always go back to the dashboard while this other page is loading. So if we are back at the dashboard, there are two, uh, a few things we need to look for. So we've found the file manager, that's good. Domain pointer is not an option here because there's only one folder and one domain allowed. So the only thing we have to find is the MySQL section of things, okay? So since we are back here, let's look for MySQL so we can create a database. So let's try to search and there it is. So you see MySQL database and PHP my admin. So the reason there are two of these is here is where you create your databases and PHP my admin is where you add data to it. So you can't create a database from here in the PHP my admin the way we do on the local host. You can only do it here. So let's click on this one here. Okay. Now while this is happening here we have a folder system, a file manager, which is good. 
So I have all these uh, files here that have been added from a previous project, but I don't need any of this. So I'm just going to delete everything, except for the public HTML folder. Let me delete that, let me delete everything, because the public HTML folder is the folder that contains, this, this folder comes by default, uh, it comes with the installation. So let's delete all files that are in here. I don't need any of these. You don't need to delete every file. I'm deleting these files because there was a pre previous project here. I don't want anything to interfere. So what I want now is let me go here in the root folder. So there's a root folder and then there's a public HTML folder here. So the way things should work is that since we have public and up here, uh, if I put this, this folder is the public HTML. So everything in here should go in the public HTML folder. And then we should have the up folder right adjacent to the public folder. But to show you that uh, there's no magic going on here, I'm going to go to my public HTML folder. Whatever file called index or home that I put here will be loaded when I load my website. So here I can try and add a file. So new file, and I'll just call it index.php and say create, like so. Create, okay, there we go. Then I want to edit this file, so I'll click edit over there, and there we go. So the only thing I want to put here is just a message to show that we have access. So I'll just put an h1 tag like this, and then say this is my website. Okay, so this is a nice code editor here. Very simplistic, but it gets the job done. So let me save here. Okay, so save and close. Let's close and save. So we are done. So as long as there's an index page there, this is how you can test to see if things are actually good. So now I need to find my domain name, which is, uh, wait a minute, where we went here is my databases. So this is where our databases are. But before that, I want to go, there's a view site, so I can right click, so I don't close this one and click on open a new tab so I can see my site. And you can see, this is my website because that's a file we added here. So it's that simple, just like that, we have a website online. So anyone can access this for as long as they have that link there. It's that simple. The only problem is with our websites is we have databases, we have public folder, app folder, etc. That's what creates the confusion. So back to our file manager here, let's import or upload our file. Since we can't use an FTP accounts, we have to manually upload everything. So I'm going to delete this uh, index file. I'll put these files in the root folder, the ones I want to upload. So I'll click here on upload files. Select files, and then I'll go to drive C, ZAMP, where they live, htdocs, and in the point of sale, and then I'll select, if you're allowed to select to app and public, and I will click open. So this is how these are uploaded, and click upload. So app is uploaded rather quickly because it's a small file. This one is slightly bigger, so it takes a little bit longer. So while this upload is going on, since we have a different tab here for databases, let's manage that. So here there are several databases that are here. So let's see if we are allowed to make any more. So it doesn't look like we are. So I'm going to just delete this uh, DB here. You want to delete? Yes. So obviously you have to delete a database if you really, you're not using it or anything like that. So. Now the option to add a new database is there because you only allowed two databases, right? But let me just delete the other one as well. I don't need either of these. Now, normally when you're creating a database, you'll be given the option to name it, right? But then this thing adds its own uh, issues to the database. It adds its own names and all that because it's free. So new database, let me name the database uh, point of sale like post. You can put underscore DB like that so that you can know it. Database username. What's the username we're going to use here? Uh, maybe we can just say root and then let's add a password. Now password uh, 
can be auto created like it's created here so it's always a good idea to auto create because after all you're going to save this password anyway so copy that let's copy that let's go to our thingy here and save it paste okay so that's our password for later and then let's create that okay so we're creating our database and it has been created now you will notice that it has added other things to the database name so you have to take those into account so i'm going to copy this as well uh, come back here and say uh, db name okay let's paste this is the password and then let's look at the username the username is root right yeah then it has added something there as well so let's come down here user root and then it has also the host is important you have to know the host as well it's localhost it's not always localhost on uh, ipage for example it's usually different they hardly use localhost okay so it's creating the database oh still doing that right for a moment i thought it was done so while we wait for the database to complete uh we can go to this is our website and we can go to this upload process so there was uploading going on here and it's done so now we have to extract these files now the thing is if i select this one and try to extract where is it maybe they fixed this uh, because last time i tried this it didn't go so well so i'm going to click uh, define your location to extract i don't want to extract enter the folder name for the extraction so that's okay i'll just click extract let's see if that is going to work can't open that file no such file blah, 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 blah. okay so this is where the problem is you know you can't extract files on this free thing which is uh, such a shame but I guess it's intentional so that you can pay for something else. Now, the advantage of this is that PHP itself does extract files. So you can extract files using PHP, which is good. So we can easily write a script right now to extract uh, these, these uh, zip files. But why write a script when somebody already did it? So let's see. Um, let's search for PHP on Google php file zip extractor let's see there's somebody who made uh, zip archive wait 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 somebody uh, there's a github project i think it's unzipper here small class to extract compressed zip yeah yeah this is the one right here so let's look for this github uh, thing here now i do have a tutorial on how to extract files using uh, php you can check my channel if you can't find this thing here that i'm uh, saying so you can create your own and actually extract those files using php but somebody already did it like i said so we don't really need to suffer this is the only file really unzipper.php very small uh, content so we can just download this file and put it there so I'll I can copy the zip download here but uh, we are trying to avoid zip files let me click on this and this is how it works see the code is right here so what you can do is just copy this entire code and uh, that's it so I'm just going to select everything select all oh this selects everything on this <laughs> which is not convenient so i'm going to what do i do here how do i how do i download this file anyway copy permalink go to file okay where is the file okay so that's the file how do i download it you know uh maybe i should have just extracted that zip so let's go back to the link we had come into the original link here and zipper which is right there and let's just do a download zip real quick i went on a tangent there which was unnecessary so let's go out out here and i'm going to 
cut that zip file and put it in my project folder and then I'll extract to it. So let me extract and uh, this is the folder. So unzipper master. So the only thing we really need is this unzipper.php because that's the code that is going to help us extract these files. So I'm just going to go right in the source folder here and click um, actually uh, the public HTML is the the base folder so we should put it in there instead so public HTML and then let's upload because once we try to access the root uh, of this website we're going to be taken to public HTML so that's where we should probably upload our unzipper so unzipper PHP open and then upload all right unzipper.php so it is done and there's one file there. So now that we have a link to our website here, if you don't have that link, as usual, just click on view site. And instead of going to the root, let's do slash and then do unzipper.php. Let's open that file instead, okay? So this is what the file looks like, okay? So now you can really select files uh, select zip or archive you want to extract okay so it's not showing anything and this is uh, normal because if we go back here you see it's alone in this folder so what we need to do is go back to our root like this oh wait a second ah right so I was wondering about this folder it's because it failed to extract the files but it created a folder anyway so uh, this is the zip folder. This is the folder that was created when attempting to uh, extract, but let's delete that to avoid confusion. Sorry about that. Okay, so we are back to the root. We have the public HTML, we have upload zip and this one. So I want to move these two guys into this public folder so the unzipper can find them. So I'm just going to look for the move to move. Okay, so destination Let's change the destination. The destination is this one. This folder does not contain any child folders. Okay, so back to the root and uh, let's select this one. Oops, sorry, my mistake. You have to click select this here. So public HTML, that's the destination, move. So once we move, there we go. So we are in the inside the public HTML now, that's where the zip folders are, including the unzipper.php. This way, if we refresh now, you see, it shows you the list of items to unzip. So it's a nice uh, PHP function to have this one. So let me select this. You can also zip some files using this, which makes it very handy. So uh, the extraction path is optional. It will extract right where it is. So let's just unzip the archive. And just like that, it's done. Let's select the public one, unzip. And that is done too. So in order to confirm that those were done, let's refresh. Click on the there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now we have more content in here, which is very nice. Now let me move everything outside so that it's outside this folder because it shouldn't be inside the public HTML. The app folder should be outside the public HTML just to match with uh, the original file system here. You see public is here, app is outside public. So we need to maintain that. So let me move the app. I'll leave the zip folders alone. So uh, maybe let me move everything, including the zip folders, just to remove them from out of the way. So one, two, three, I'll remove everything, even the unzip.php because I don't need it anymore. Um, I'll leave this public folder here and let me move them outside of this. So let's click move and let's change the destination to the root. So root, yeah, uh, select this, I guess means where we are and then move. So we've moved everything outside. Inside the public HTML, we only have this public folder, but we don't need 
the things that are inside this public folder should be inside the public HTML, not inside another public folder, because right now it's public HTML slash public slash the public stuff. No, we want the, the, this public folder represents the public HTML folder. So let's move everything over into public HTML. So I'll select everything from here and move it as well. And let's change this. Let me move one folder away and select this. So we are moving to public HTML and move. Okay. Alrighty then. So if I click on public HTML now, this is what I see. You see this stuff here? It's exactly the stuff that is inside the public folder when I open it. One, two, three items. Let's see here. One, two, three. But there are four items because there's an empty public folder in here. So I don't need this anymore. I can now delete that. Delete. Okay, so now we have assets upload index, which is exactly what we have in the public folder of our local host assets uploads index. Okay, only that uh, public there has been replaced with public HTML. Now, if we go to the root itself, uh, in the root, we also have the app folder, even though we have these extra zip files and unzipper, so you can avoid ignore these but the main stuff is the app folder plus public html which is exactly how it should be it's app public html but this is the base root of the website so now if i go to the website and try to run this uh it's going to give me a few errors so let's try and run that if we go to our website again let's remove the unzipper at the end of the link let's just let it load normally Okay, so there it is, my point of sale, and everything seems to be working just fine. But it's saying access denied, of course. If I click on login, it takes me to this. But we won't be able to log in. Let me try email at email.com. Okay, and then password. Don't save. So this is the error I get, an access denied. Uh, using password no so access denied for user root at dot 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 so when you see this it just means uh, this SQL state it means this is an SQL error which means we are unable to connect to the database this is actual error access denied for the user so that's because we did it we didn't put the correct details you see the details here change this point, point of sale DB and these are the new details that we have to add to our system. So in order to do that, we have to go back to our app folder where the configuration file is. So I'm going to go to core and then this one is in config. Now, this is very specific to my website, right? The file structure here, the app, the, the way these things are set up. It's because that's how I set up my website. So what you need to change here is the uh, database connection information. Now, it so happens that mine is stored in the config.php file. Now, regardless of your website, depending on where that information is stored, that's where you have to go on this particular uh, part. So we click on edit to edit that file. And uh, this is the contents of my config file. So it seems this is not where the data is. Maybe it's in database.php after all. Uh, let's see. Okay, there, that's where it is. So this is where the DB connection stuff is. So let me zoom it out a little bit so I can see properly. Now the host is already local host, so we are good. Here I have to put the DB name. This is why it's important to put these things in order like this so it's easy to change them like that so that's the db name and the db user is this one okay copy let's put that user here boom there's a password as well let's copy that password copy the password here driver remains like that the other one is localhost and let's save and close okay pretty good so once we are done with that, we'll have a different error this time. Let me refresh and resend. Okay, so it just says wrong email. Okay, 
So this email does not exist. That's because our database has no data. So let's add some data to our database because if we go back to manage databases, right? Right here where we created the database, if I click and say PHP my admin, okay? So there are two ways to get to PHP my admin. You can also go back to the dashboard itself and there's a PHP my admin section right there as well or you can do it from the manage website, manage uh, databases here. So down here, if you will remember, there's this PHP my admin. Okay. So in here, you see here is our, our database that was created. But if we click on it, you see that there are no tables or anything. Let's, let's wait. Okay, there we go. So it's asking me to create table. No tables found. That's okay. All I need to do now is go, go to my local host and look for the database which is right here i'll click on it that's the database i want with these things in here and i'll just go to the export and export this database so click go export click there and it's inside my downloads folder it's called point of sale db so if i now go to the online version of my PHP my admin I can click import under this database and browse let's go to my downloads point of sale SQL open and then let's click go to update so what is this is supposed to do is bring in all the data the uh, the data and the tables and everything from the other database so once this is, this could take a while actually. It does normally take a while, if, especially if the database is quite large. So once you click on that, we should see what it has created. But it looks like there are no errors here. If I look down here, I don't see any errors. Everything seems to have gone well. It's showing me all the, um, everything that was run. So if you want to change your time zone, maybe it's plus two like in my case, you can run this query. Set time zone is equal to, because here it's set on 000, you can set it to whatever number you want for dates and stuff. This is the SQL to run. Set time zone and then equal to, and then put that time zone. Then here uh, we have our stuff in here. So there's the users table. If I click on it, I will see the user information. But without further ado, while this is loading, okay, there it is. I can go back now and try to log in again. This time it should work. Okay, it's telling me access denied for some reason. Let me go to, okay, so still access denied. Let's try and log in again. Email at email.com and then password. Wow, it's still saying uh, access denied, even when things seem to have gone well. So why is this happening? Uh, I have no idea. Wait, what is going on? So there are times when um, the website fails to, to register session data. So what we can do here for troubleshooting is let's go to our file uh, manager here and I just want to go to the index page. Where is that? Inside uh, public HTML and I'm going to go to my index page and try to edit it. So right at the top here, I just want, after session start, I just want to print r underscore r and then print the underscore session like this. So everything is working. It's just that it's not recognizing when I I log in. So let me see. I want to, it to show me what's inside the session data. And as you can see, the session is empty, but it exists as an array, which is nice. So it means it should be okay. Sessions are working just fine. Mm -hmm since it says array there. So maybe I'm just not correctly, but there is there email at email.com 
and uh, password looks like a different password i have no idea what this is uh-huh wait a second let me try here here i tried this and it worked so let's try email at email.com password okay it works here so it should work as well online so email at email.com password login let's go to the index page it's still empty hmm okay <laughs> Hmm, this is interesting. Um, the session is too empty for some reason. Okay, so what I can try is this. Uh, this is now troubleshooting. So what I'll do is I'll say, let me try and save something in the session, right? I'll say session me in brackets is equal to, let me just put a value or just call it value like that and then save so let me just see if it will save there so it has managed to save that so which means there's no problem with sessions it's just failing to connect okay so if it's failing to connect then there's a problem with the connection there so back to let me remove these guys so this is not where the problem is so I'll delete that and save Save and close. Okay. So what I need to know is if things are happening, how things are happening uh, internally there. Now, the thing is, uh, the website has successfully been uploaded. This is the purpose of this tutorial. So this troubleshooting thing is not part of it. So I'm just doing that to see if um, we can fix that real quick. Uh, I'll try and fix it. If I can't fix it, then we, we will go ahead and forget about it because it's not really part of the tutorial. So I'll click on login. Where is login? There it is. And click edit. I just want to see. Okay, cancel. Click edit. I want to see what might be the problem here. So uh, authenticate, blah, blah, blah. Let me just see if here where it says password verify, if we do get to this point. So here I'm just going to say echo. Uh, I want to see what's inside row. So I'll use print underscore R like this and check what's inside row and then say die. Okay. And then uh, save without closing. So I'll go back to my login page and do the same thing. Email at email.com and then put password there and then login. Okay. Don't save. So it is actually returning a correct value here, but it's just not saving it, I see. So back here, this is all good. It's the authenticate that isn't working, I guess. So I'll close this, seven, close. So we need to find this authenticate function. So uh, save and close. Okay, so back to authenticate inside core functions. Where is that? Oops. What did I do? Yeah, functions and edit. So then I want to see exactly where the problem is. So authenticate is right here. We're just saying session user is equal to bro. Okay. Uh, so I don't see why this is not working. Now, usually the reason why um, uh, this could be a problem is because maybe the session was not started somehow. But since we are using the index page, everything is going through the index page. Uh, it should be active. So right about here, what I want to do is just do print r underscore r and then i'll say session i just want to check 
what's inside session after we do this. And then put die here so that it doesn't really leave the page. So I will refresh, resend, and it looks exactly the same. So this is what we got from the uh, thingy there. So that's nice. And since that worked, things should be fine now, right? Let me refresh, resend. But I still get access denied. Why? Hmm. Okay, back to the functions page right at the top here. I just want to do print R session. So this is not a problem with my website. This is a problem with the system itself. Uh, it's not saving uh, session data. So you see the session is empty again. That's not good at all. So the problem is with uh, this hosting company here. So let me save and close that and forget about it. So my code is just fine, fortunately. It's just that uh, sessions are not saving. So this is an error with uh, this system here. Uh, this usually goes away on its own as you run the website. I think it usually a problem at the beginning for some one reason or another, I'm not sure why, but it has to do with, uh, maybe there's a missing folder that is supposed to keep um, sessions, right? Maybe the folder is missing because if we, you go to, let's see here, uh, if I go to click config here, and then I go to uh, php.ini, right? Uh, let me search for something called, uh, let me look for session, right? Let's go. Uh -huh. Session production, not that. Uh, there's a session folder. Um, session, right? There's a folder that is supposed to save session files and it should always be there. I'm not sure. Uh, you see, I haven't encountered this file many times. Okay, there it is. Session.savePath. It's inside ZAMP and temp. Okay, so temp folder there. So this is what PHP INI expects. So let's try and give it that. Maybe that's where the problem is. I'm not sure, but let's see if we can uh, fix using that. So right in the home folder here, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it TMP like that and create it. Okay. Just uh, to see if things will work out this time. So refresh. Let's refresh the website. Login. Email at email.com. Password. And let's try to log in. And it has worked. Look at that. Such an unlikely uh, scenario here, but uh, that was the solution, it seems. So that folder is now used to save um, session files. So if I click inside here, I should find a session file. See that? That's the session file there. Okay, so that's, uh, you could keep scratching your head for the whole day just to figure out this solution. Uh, right here. And the reason I've managed to figure this out is because the very first time I had uploaded my website, I had this problem, but it slipped my mind because I never really have this problem anymore in uh, my new uh, uploads recent. This is very old, so I thought it, I had forgotten about this problem. So it just clicked in my mind just now that uh, it could be that problem. Anyway, if in case you have any errors while uploading your website like this, just uh, Google and uh, I can assure you that somebody has had that problem before and they're going to write about it and uh, give you information on that. But anyway, this is how you upload a website to uh, online. So as you can see here, this is the link to the website and everything seems to be working fine. It's a point of sale. 
adding stuff and then doing the checkout and everything seems to be working fine and now it's online so that's how you do it so let's recap a little bit of what we have done so the first thing we did is opened up an account to get our hosting and our domain name now since our system is free they give you a domain name by by force you don't have to choose it this is uh, you're just given that you're also given an account a hosting account with a hard drive space to put uh, your files and you're given a specific folder you can't change that folder to a space it's just the pointer that's there and then we look for our file manager to upload our files in zip format and then since we can't do the pointer thing we created a database and we changed some we didn't change any php settings but uh, we changed things to suit the php settings instead then once you create your database you save the data for use and you update your database connection uh, to whatever you've created in your database there and then you export your local version of the database and import it online and uh, that does it so this is pretty much it how you upload a website online so you can use this zero zero host to test your skills on uploading things like this but now for those that want to see a different system which is a paid system like ipage uh, just so you can see the differences between this one and how we do things on the other side and we can get to use filezilla as well uh, keep watching because that's the next step we are doing all right, so let's go ahead and do this on a paid system. So like I said, I have um, uh, I have an account with ipage.com and uh, wait, I'm already logged in, am I? Okay, seems I'm already logged in. But uh, ipage, if you just go to ipage.com like this, uh, I've used these guys for a long time, like I said, so they're pretty good live chat which is what i like the most because you can chat with someone immediately and get your problem solved and then if you click on login here oh not that actually let's click on get started if you're new you click on get started here you know i should have gotten a promo code for these guys uh, advertising free advertising yeah but anyway it doesn't matter the hosting that you use uh, these things are pretty much the same except that ipage doesn't use a cPanel system which looks like uh, this dashboard here. This one is much easier to handle because you can see things clearly here laid out uh, for you to see. But iPage, for some reason, they just want to do things a little bit harder. Uh, the hard way, I guess. I, I don't know why. So here what you do is when you're starting off, you just click get started. This is if you don't have an account with iPage. So you click on get started here. And then I think I had already clicked this. Then here you create a domain name because this is a paid system. And so you need to create your own unique domain name. They won't give it for, to you. Like for example, the way we have facebook.com like this, but this is already taken. So you can't get Facebook. You have to create your own. Uh, so let's just create one, uh, my boost, boost.com. I'm just trying to find something that uh, nobody has taken. I'll be surprised if anyone has taken this. Ah, okay. So it says, congrats, your domain is available, which means nobody has taken it already. Now, if you just want to check if a domain exists or not, if it's free or not, you can use whois. You say whois.com like that. This is what I use all the time. Instead of having to go to iPage, you can go to whois and just type, um, say for example, Facebook and you click search. They're going to tell you that Facebook is taken. So let's see here. And I'm sure Facebook took all the .net. It says is unavailable. Uh, let's see, you can only get free Facebook. So these guys took everything. They took facebook.com, facebook.org, facebook.net to make sure that no one can impersonate them because it's a big business. They can afford to do that. Uh, but for you who is starting, you only need the .com. So you see, there's freefacebook.com, then you can select. Uh, but don't sell, don't click any of this. It's just for you to, they do sell domain names, these guys. Uh, but this is just for you to test out domains and see uh, which one 
is available and which one is not. Uh, close that. So back here, you can do the same thing with iPage. So you can keep typing here to see which one is available. And when it is available like this, then you can add to the cart. Here it's uh, $71 for three years. So like I had said, in here, iPage will give you a free domain name and this is all payment for hosting. Like I had said before, you have two things that you're paying for, domain name and hosting. So your domain, actually you're paying for your domain name here. If you say three years, for example, oh no, 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 actually this is hosting. You're paying for hosting for three years, but uh, the, what is this? I think the domain itself is one year. Yeah. So you see there are two things in this card here. There's the domain purchase, and then there's this they call the Go Plan, which is the web hosting. So there's ho web hosting, which you're paying for for three years. And then there's this Boost Boost, which we've created.com. You're paying for the domain purchase here, the domain name, for only one year. So you're going to be surprised that in a year, even though you paid for three years, in a year they'll be asking you to pay for your domain name. Okay. And usually it says something like $10 per year. Or something like that so you'd be surprised and saying but i paid for three years why are they giving this is a headache i had when i first started but i didn't realize that i'm paying for two things here even though this one is free currently because when you open a new account they give you a domain name for free so but if you change to three years then charges will apply then it increases your overall spending there. But if you can afford it, put three years there as well so that you're not disturbed for three years at least with your hosting and your domain name at the same time. But once you go through this whole process, you can remove what you don't like here by clicking the X and so on. Okay, but if you select one year, it's free. Then you can remove this uh, uh, what's this domain patches privacy whatever which gets it to 101 uh, it doesn't need to get there you can only pay seven you can pay 71 by itself remove everything you don't want okay so at the end of the day once you do that they're going to give you an account where you can now log in so let's see how to log into that particular account so this is the login. Once you click login, this is what you do. So I log in there, but I've already logged in. So this is all good. Once I log in, it comes to my domain uh, section here. And these are all the domains. Like I had said, you can put many domains on one account. So these are all the domains that I have here. The one I'm interested in is this one here. So you choose one. When you uh, open an account the first time you're going to only have one domain there but you can add more if you want that way we can have four five or ten websites on one account and you only select which folder like i had said here you put a pointer to a specific folder that you want uh, to use so you can have many folders as many folders as the domain names themselves okay so here we gone to the, where have I gone? I've clicked on the hosting, no? I have no idea where I clicked. Uh, oh, I clicked on the domain name. So it takes me to the summary of the domain name, but I'm not interested in all this. I'm interested in the pointers here. So I'll click on the pointers. Now the pointers are what I was talking about here to tell it which folder I want to use for my current website. Now, at the same time, uh, let me close this. At the same time, there's a file manager. If I go to hosting here, but I'll open this in a different fo uh, tab. Oh my God. After closing the, the thing, it's asking me to log in again. So that login went well and it's redirecting me now to the it takes a second and then it takes forever to load the page so just be patient if you're using ipage uh, there it is i don't know why it takes so long to load this particular thing but it doesn't seem to be taking sometimes it takes 30 minutes or so i have no idea why 
So here I've clicked on my domain again after loading in and it shows me the summary of that domain and things I can uh, do here. I wanted it to load so I can show you the SSL thing, but as it is loading, okay. So let's encrypt free SSL. If you want to use HTTPS instead of HTTP, you can select this free SSL there. It works just fine. And then these others, I think I paid uh, domain lock and privacy. You have to pay for those. So let's click on the pointers and subdomains. So here it's showing me where this uh, particular domain name is going. So it's going in this folder, but let's remove this and let's do, um, let's call it point of sale. And then let's put public, okay? inside a folder in the root folder we'll put point of sale and then we'll put public now if this folder doesn't exist it's going to create this so let's save which i know it doesn't exist so it's going to create that folder so once i've done with the pointers as you can see here we are done with the pointer now let's go to the file manager so the pointer has been updated that's good then now i can click on hosting and uh, I can go to file manager, okay? Mm -hmm. So in the file manager here, you see this is a root and there's so many folders here because I have so many websites running. But there's this one point of sale, which I've just created. So if I click on it, I will see there's a public folder here because that's what I specified as the root. So it creates that folder. If I go in, it just added an ht access file so now if i try to visit my website the same one which is safety app dot space uh, oh here is where you can select the others so what i'll do is i'll just type it safety app dot space and see what it will show me now so it shows me forbidden, you don't have access. And that's because of this HT access file. But now let's add our own files here. Now remember that we did, um, we created zip folders for those. Now I can easily click here and say upload and then extract them. But instead of uploading using the file manager here, this file manager is the worst of the worst. So I don't want to use this, but you can just click on upload and then you can upload. So let's upload one file here, which is the app, zipapp.php. Now I want to upload it, not in the public folder actually, I want to upload it in the root, uh, the main, which is point of sale, right next to the public one. So upload, choose file, and then click zipapp.zip, .zip, and then open it so that you can see the upload process. It's very straightforward. And there it is, upload it, okay? And then let's try and upload again. Um, let me click. Uh, wait, am I going to change? Okay, we're going to do something. Choose public. Let's get the public version. I will let it upload from here, but you can use FileZilla, which is much better. So while this is uploading, let's go ahead and use FileZilla. So once you download FileZilla, like I had said earlier from here, I click download FileZilla. This is FileZillaProject.org. If you can't find it, just Google it, you get it. Once you upload it, uh, you, down, you download it, so, sorry. Let's, uh, let's open it, FileZilla. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the installation process. So the, the installation process is very straightforward. Uh, you just, click next, next, next. There's really not much to change there. So FileZilla, I'm trying to find the, the installation file. I can't seem to find it. This is uh, insane. So what I'll do is let me go down here and just search for it in the software. F, where is F? right here no files what is going on this is uh, insane okay i bet this is already installed right 
in any case, let me reinstall it just in case I missed something. Oh, wait a second. I should have it on my desktop, though. Wow, nothing. This is, uh, yeah, this is insane. Okay. Let's go to install it for some reason. Agree. Mm -hmm. Let's not, let's decline. This one is saying we should download a browser and install it. No. Uh, so it's saying FileZilla is already installed. Show me where it is then. Jeez. Okay. FileZilla. Uh-huh. There we go. Finally. Ah, there we go. Okay. So it's already installed. Now, what you do here to use FileZilla uh, is you need to make a connection. So let's go back to iPage. I have too many of these open. So this is our file manager here, but we don't want to use it. Okay, the um, installing is done. The only thing we need, the upload is done. The only thing we need to do now is extract these files. Now, last time we had downloaded something to use to extract. We can run that as well. Uh, that's not a problem or if you want to use the extractor that comes with ipage you can do that by just going to the summary here let's click on summary and then let's go to archive gateway i don't know why it's in here it's supposed to be right in the in the file manager you just click extract file i, I don't know why they put it like this but this is where it is archive gateway so let me click on point of sale this is where my folders are now we're going to have a problem because you see the public folder exists and the this is public zip which is supposed to create another folder now since we can't replace this file because it was created by the system it will prohibit us from replacing this file we're going to have an error if we try to extract the public folder but let's try the app folder and see what happens so like I told you earlier, you can do the uncompressing using that unzipper that we downloaded earlier. You can also do that. Now, this one has successfully uncompressed. If I click on the public and try to uncompress it, I'm going to get an error because it will fail to uh, replace that folder. So you see, failed to properly move files. I thought so. So the thing we need to do is move the files around. Now, instead of us doing it from here, because I don't like this file manager, let's use the FTP system. So to do that, you find where the FTP manager is. Now, if, if I click here, that's the FTP manager. Now, if you remember in the other system here, this is the free uh, WW web host you will see that uh, there's a FTP manager somewhere, which is right here, FTP accounts, that's what it's called, but it's a premium feature. But here, because I'm paying, I am in premium mode, I can access FTP accounts. So there are all these FTP accounts here, but let me create a new one so we can see how to do it from scratch. I'm going to call this one point of sale. You can call it anything. Then add a password there. Uh, let me try. So I'm trying to make sure it ticks all these uh, uppercase, lowercase, symbol, whatever. And then it's always a good idea to select a very specific folder for your FTP account because in case it gets hacked or someone gets the password, they won't have access to all your websites. They will have access to just one folder which belongs to a specific website. So instead of getting access to all this, select a specific folder and then say create user. So it's telling me username point of sale is already in use. Really? Is it? Oh. Okay, so point of sale two, right? Let's try that. Okay, so done. Oh, so there is point of sale already. I thought I deleted this guy. Crap. Okay, so let me delete this new one I've created because I like the point of sale simplicity instead of adding a two there. But it's the same process as you can see 
uh, of creating a username. So what I'll do now, since I've created an FTP account, I can now go to this FileZilla, put the user there, point of cell. There's a password there. So I'll put whatever password you put there, just put it here. Now you need a host because it knows it should know where to go, which server to access. So you must find the server. You can find that on this summary here. Okay. And there, there it is. FTP path, FTP. This is the FTP, FTP path. Sorry. You can also use the IP address. It's the same thing because this is later changed to an IP address anyway. So, but let's copy that because it's easier to remember. And let me paste that and let's do a quick uh, connect. So you see it's connecting here, establishing a connection. So you see things are going well. Uh, okay, it will use port 21. That's the default, so that's fine. No need to put a port number. Retrieving, and then it brings up this. So you see it's bringing up the point of sale folder only. It's not showing me everything there, but just the, what's inside the point of sale folder, and this is what I added in there right in the point of sale folder wait shouldn't there be a public wait a second there should be a public zip right so if i click here oh so the public zip is in here but why hmm what's going on here uh, Wait a minute, wait a minute, where's my file manager? Point of sale. This is what is in point of sale, right? Uh, let's see what's inside public. There's nothing. So why is it showing me the wrong stuff? Ah, uh, I see why. Sorry about that. Uh, the reason is that that's a different user account. So, sorry. Let's go back to FTP. Let me delete this point of sale. Uh, delete user. Yes. Let me create it again because it was pointing to a different folder. Sorry about that. Point of sale. And so I've put in the same password again and then select the point of sale folder. So I had created it earlier for some other project and uh, it was pointing to a different folder. So if I do this now and try to refresh, click on refresh, let's see it show me something else. Okay, let me tell it to clear the history here and try to connect again. Establish connection on a new tab. No, abort previous connection, refresh the connection. That's what I'm trying to make it do. So let's see what happens. And it doesn't seem to have done anything. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let me close FileZilla, start again. And start again. Let's clear that history. Username, point of cell, password. Uh, let's try. Alrighty then. Come on, come on, come on, come on. So this was entirely my mistake because yeah, so this is the correct one, with, which has two of these and an empty uh, public folder. Okay. Yeah, as you can see. So now all I need to do is move. So let me click on the home. I want to move this public folder. I can just drag and drop it in here, this public zip into the public. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to extract it and then let it create a public folder in here without having to replace anything because there's no public folder in here, so I can easily extract it. But I can't extract from here. So I still need to use iPage for extracting, which is such a shame. 
here it had refused so let's try that process again uh, click on public this time because that's where we've put the zip folder and then extract okay so let's see if it's going to give us a green light now and there we go so the compression was successful now we can close this uh, archive manager and uh, this is our website itself it's still not functioning properly so here now i have this zip oh actually i've extracted so i'll need to refresh everything so i'll click refresh uh, which is right at the top there okay so the refresh is successful so we have the app folder which is nice so we don't need this zip folder anymore so i can easily delete this no problem just for cleanliness then i can now go to my public folder and it hasn't refreshed let's refresh it should have a folder in there after extracting okay there we go so that's a folder this i don't need anymore i can delete that zip folder and then we have a public folder now inside the public folder you see that public public but we don't want this we want the contents of what's inside the public folder here to be right in this main folder so all i need to do is select all these and then just drag and drop them there like that so it's moving them one by one out so if i click here now they are directly in this folder and this public folder now is empty so if i click back in public here there's a public folder here that's empty which i can remove so the point of all this is to create the same system that i see on my local host to maintain the file structure so as you can see there's the main folder and then there's app and then there's public inside public there's assets and uploads that's exactly what we have in here okay we have the point of sale folder there's app there's public inside public there's assets uploads and index okay and then keep in mind that we've put this public folder as the pointer so when somebody types our uh, web address they are reaching the public folder as it should be so they're going directly to the public folder but then the app folder is above the public folder out of the reach of someone trying to access this folder while online that's why we put the app folder outside the public folder so once we've done that our website should be running now if i refresh as you will see shortly there's an internal server error here now what this means is that uh, there's an error but uh, your website is not allowed to display errors so what we can do instead is edit that file now it's a pain to edit from filezilla so i don't know if it's actually possible so we're going to use the file manager from ipage surprise surprise so point of sale now what i'm trying to do is edit my database connection settings so remember that i i haven't actually added any uh, database connection so i'm sure that's where that's the error that's there but in order for us to see the error let me refresh this it's, it hasn't refreshed to refresh the to display the new files this is why i don't like the ipage file manager so i'll refresh the whole page then go back to point of cell and i want to go to app core and database so i want to edit this file oh wait a second yes let's see if we can edit the file okay so we need to change these database connection but before we do that i want to be sure that this is actually the error that the actual error that is causing all this so i'll go to point of sale public inside the index file i'll click edit and then right after no right at the top just after the php tags i'm going to add i and i underscore set any set like that let me do it from my uh, text editor so you can see it better so it's like this i and i set and then put brackets and say display underscore errors and then put a comma and put one 
so you can put on off one or zero so this is the setting so ini set is a function that is used to set things from the php.ini file in case you don't want to actually edit the ini file you can just set them here though some settings don't work if you do them like this they only work if you actually access the ini file but it's worth a shot if they don't work here that's when you can go to the file itself so i'll copy this and put it right there and save <clears throat> this will allow me to see errors on my website so if i come back this is what i have it says internal server error right if i refresh now i should get an actual error and as you can see there it is that way i know what's going on so it's telling me cannot use object of type blah 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 this is the same error we had seen earlier before we changed uh, database connection settings on the other website we had tried so which means uh, yes uh, this is just a complaint about the database, although it's complaining about objects and stuff. It's only because when you try to read from the database, it didn't get a result. And then we were expecting those results to be an array. And then we tried to extract data from an empty result. So that's why we're having these errors here. So let's install our MySQL quickly. So we click on MySQL management and then we can create a database. Here it says add MySQL database. So I'll click um, to add one so i'm going to call this one point of sale underscore db uh, because this is this is not a free thing it doesn't really change the name of your db so username i'm going to try uh, i would say username let's try point of sale Let's put a password. Now, it's always a good idea to let it generate the password. Okay, so use secure generated password, boom. There it is. So I'll copy that. If I click here, let me paste there as well. And then save. And then it tells you what access you want, what privileges you want. Now, if this is the, f uh, usually, you don't need the drop uh, thingy here. This uh, alter table, temp, lock. You can remove these. The things that you really need, even the create, you don't need. The things that you really need are these four. Select, insert, update, and delete. These others you can remove because if someone gains access to your database, you don't want them to be able to drop the database. So if you untick this, uh, it limits the access. But... If you are not uh, sure of anything, just leave everything on. But if it's a serious commercial pro product, you might consider doing that. So this is the database here. And let me paste my uh, password for our new thing. Password. Uh -huh. The user we used is, no, DB name is post underscore db so let me now click manage on this db now when you click manage it shows you the server name and the db name the username so those are the details you want so user and then uh, server or host as it is called okay so as you can see it's not localhost anymore the user is this one point of sale okay so we have all the details we need now all i need to do is go to my file manager and then go to my point of sale uh, app core the database file and edit it and right here i can change all these uh what was the last thing i pasted the it was the host so let me change that host to this oh that wasn't right it's the user paste so let's check the password The DB is exactly the same, 
let's change the password password looks the same as well uh, the host uh -huh. okay once you're done with those details save all righty then so now if i come back i shouldn't see this error anymore oh the error is still there because there's no data <laughs> I forgot about that part. So what I need to do now, once I've done editing, back to my MySQL and click on manage the point of sale uh, thing and then go to PHP my admin. Okay. So in the PHP my admin, I need to import just like I did on the previous project. Uh, I need to import the new database. So the database is right here. I need to select it, click on it. Mm -hmm. So you should make sure you select a database and then click import browse point of sale db the same db we exported last time let's import it here and then click go okay it takes a while but it's done now if i refresh my uh, website oopsie daisy uh, things don't seem to have worked anyway. Let's see here. Okay. Okay, for some reason, I don't know. Uh, let me do, let me access the logout page so that I try to log in. Or what I can do is just do slash login. Let's see if that works. Okay, so I get nothing. 404 means not page not found. So what I need to really do is say index.php because this is how my website is designed. And then PG is equal to login. That's just the link to the login page. Okay. So things are working so far. Email at email.com and then password, password. Then let's, let's log in and there we go. So it's working just fine. And done. Okay, pretty cool. Uh -huh. Things are working as intended. All right, so that's how you upload files and stuff and uh, using FileZilla as well as an FTP client. Now, FileZilla is quite complex. Uh, there are times when you need to actually add specific settings in order to access a specific website those that are very secure that use files um, instead of using a password they send you a key which is in form of a file so you have to figure out how to add those things here you can always use google to figure out when you don't know something so keep in mind you have a very powerful tool that is google in your arsenal just google what you don't understand and it's somebody who will tell you exactly how to do it okay but normally with uh, FileZilla, the way you upload files here is just drag and drop. So as you can see here, um, let's go to app here. Let me click on app for a second. Let's say in case I edited a file and I want to update it. Okay, so maybe the file is inside core and then it's the functions file, right? So core and then that's the functions file. All I need to do is go find the file here. So I'll go to my drive on the local drive, go to C and then go to ZAMP, which is right here, ZAMP, and then htdocs, which is right here, and then go to my project there. And then these are the folders in there. So I'll just follow the same process here, app, call, and that's functions. Then I can just drag and drop the file in here. And just like that, I'm moving the file from my local host to my server and it will start it will ask you here do you want to override the file or do you want to skip rename usually i select override and say I always use this action uh this will only work for this session if i close filezilla it will ask me again the first time i try this okay so it will refresh replace that file the advantage of this is i can select all of these files at once and then drop them in there like this so as you can see, it queues them up and then uploads them one by one. 
this is better than if you you can do this instead of zipping the files if you don't want to zip the files you just want to transfer them one by one you can queue them up in filezilla and that way you avoid that whole thing of extracting um etc etc you can just upload the files directly where they belong and if the file transfer fails it just keeps trying and trying if for some reason the whole queuing stops you can see here this failed file transfers so if a file fails to transfer to be saved here and then you can select them and right click and say reset and requeue all and then you tell it to run the queue you go at transfer and say process the queue it will start uploading them again in case they had failed another advantage of this is you can just drag the whole app folder and drop it exactly where you want like you click here and just drop it there boom and then everything in the app folder goes with it you don't have to select files one by one so as you can see the files here are being uploaded it's counting down 30 files 29 27 as you can see successful transfers there no failed files so far if anything fails it will come down to the failed files section here then you can requeue it again like i said and then click process as you can see if i want to stop the pro uh, upload at any moment i just untick the process queue there on transfer all right so hopefully you have learned something uh, new in this whole upload process and if you have any questions, of course, just ask me in the comment section. I will answer them for you and I will see you in another video.